In this video, we want to continue on with our discussion of the three-dimensional coordinate system. Uh, and to do that, I want to follow up with the last problem we were working on, which was to sketch z equals x squared plus y squared. And let's do this and not make it so complicated, uh, at least not as complicated as I was trying to make it last time. So we can draw our x, y, and z axes, all in the positive x, positive y, and positive z directions. And we have z is equal to x squared plus y squared. That is a paraboloid. So let's draw a parabola. And then we can draw a circle. And we have a bunch of just concentric circles here that we can draw. And I'll draw the back half of the circle using these dotted lines uh, to represent that's the back half of our paraboloid. And so we've drawn a paraboloid here. In particular, z is equal to x squared plus y squared is a paraboloid facing up centered around the z axis. Notice that we don't have anything below because x squared plus y squared is either zero or positive, so that forces z to be positive. So we don't have anything below the xy plane or any negative z values there. So we've drawn uh, the paraboloid center on the z-axis. If we wanted a paraboloid centered around the y-axis in a positive direction, it would be y is equal to x squared plus z squared. Centered around the x-axis, that would be x is equal to y squared plus z squared. All right. Let's continue on with our notes from here. So, a few things to quickly discuss, but for the most part, I just want you reading through these. Our distance formula in three dimensions is given here. Notice our notation. It looks like the absolute value of p1, p2. This really means the distance or length from the point P1 to P2. Uh, you have a picture over here on the right that represents that. We have a point P2 here at the top corner of this rectangular prism. And P1 here is in this back bottom corner of this rectangular prism. And we're finding the length between there, so the distance of the line between those two points. Uh, and that is given by this formula, which should look very familiar. That is, uh, if we think about the distance formula in two dimensions, and we just cross off the z part here, we get exactly that formula for the, the distance formula in two dimensions. So in three dimensions, we just add, a, add another plus uh, z1 minus z2 squared, so that third variable, the distance between that third variable, and then squared. This actually extends into four dimensions, five dimensions, etc., and you would just do plus, and they have a fourth variable, maybe w1 minus w2 quantity squared, and you would add that in, and that would all be under the square root as well. We also have our formal definition for the equation of a sphere here. So if we have a point x0, y0, and z0 as our center, and we have a radius of r, then our formula is x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared plus z minus z naught squared is equal to r squared. So if we go back to the equation x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1, we are centered at 0 comma 0 comma 0, so we're centered at the origin, and our radius is 1. That was all done in the previous video. All right, uh, and this last statement says, in particular, if the center is the origin O, uh, then this is the equation, right? Because it's x minus zero squared, we can just write that as x squared, and so on. All right, we have a few more examples that we want to run through. So we'll do that now. Uh, in this fourth example for this uh, section, we want to find the center and radius of the sphere whose equation is x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 6 plus 2y minus 6z. 
To do this, we actually just want to complete the square several times because we want to put this in the form of x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared plus z minus z naught squared is equal to r squared. So we're just going to complete the square several times. All right, so let's do that. Uh, here we go. And so let's see, we want x minus uh, zero squared because there was no extra x over here plus y squared. And I want to move everything except for this 6 over to the left. So this is going to be y squared minus 2y plus something because we're going to complete the square plus z squared plus 6z, right? Just added 6z over plus something for completing the square is equal to six, and then we're gonna add a couple of things over here. So to complete the square, we take our middle term, which is gonna be this, uh, or the coefficient on the middle term, which is this negative two, we divide by two, and then we square it. So we divide this by two, square it, we get one. Here, we take our middle term, divide it by two, so that's 3 and square it, so this is 9. So we've added 1 and 9. If we had 1 and 9 on the left, we need to add 1 and 9 on the right. And then we get x squared plus... Okay, so y, minus, y squared minus 2y plus 1 is really y minus 1 squared. Z plus C squared plus 6Z plus 9 is really Z plus 3 squared. And this is equal to, all right, we have 6 plus 1 plus 9 on the right, so that is equal to 16. So what we notice is that this is a, a sphere with center 0, 1, negative 3, and a radius 4. But here is our equation of the sphere in standard form. And here is what the center and radius are for that particular sphere. Okay. Quick note here, we have a midpoint formula. Again, this is very similar to the midpoint formula in two dimensions. We just have a third dimension here. So our third coordinate point is just the z coordinate of the first point plus the z coordinate of the second point divided by two. And uh, that would be our midpoint for two points in three dimensions. Okay, so now for this last example we have four parts that we're going to uh, find what the region in R3 is uh, represented by these following inequalities. Well, we have the inequality y equals, uh, sorry, y is less than or equal to 1 here. Well, let's try to draw that real quick just to see what's going on. Really, the words or the phrase uh, answer that we're going to write out in a bit is uh, what we're going to want as an answer. But uh, to help us see what this is, let's draw a picture first, just as we're trying to get familiar with what these objects are and in particular what this inequality is. Okay, so we want y is equal or less than 1, so let's draw our y equals 1. Well, y equal to 1, we should notice that that is a plane parallel to the xz plane passing through y equals 1. So let's draw that plane. So let's go straight down here, then we're going to have some lines parallel to the xz, the, uh, sorry, the x-axis here, and a line parallel to the z-axis, and then another line parallel to the x-axis. And so we've drawn our plane for y equal to 1, but really we want y is equal or less than 1 is the region we are working with here. Well, what is that? 
Well, that's all points to the left of this plane. Right? So it's all of these points to the left of that plane. So this is the half space. Terminology is half space here. This is the half space with all points x, y, and z where y is equal or less than 1. So x and z can be anything but as long as y is equal or less than 1. All right. We have something going on similarly here with z squared is greater than 1, but this is two half spaces. Notice that this is equivalent to the statements that z is greater than 1 or z is less than negative 1. Right? So z squared is greater than 1 implies either z is greater than 1 or z is less than negative 1. So I'm not going to try to draw the picture all in one space here. You could, if you wish, draw the picture for just z is greater than 1 and the picture for z is less than negative 1 on two different pictures. But if we tried to combine that into one picture, that would get kind of messy and hard to see, hard to visualize. Uh, so really, with this statement, though, we can just say this is the two half spaces consisting of all points x, y, and z, where either z is greater than 1 or z is less than negative 1. And it's those two half spaces. Uh, and that would satisfy the region uh, where we satisfy this inequality. Okay. So now we have two more here, real quick. Uh, this one is y squared plus z squared is equal to less than 16. Well, notice that... This looks like y squared plus z squared is equal to r squared, which is a circle of radius 4 centered at uh, 0, 0. So if we draw this picture to see what's going on, we have a cylinder here, a circular cylinder. The variable that is missing is x, so this is a circular cylinder of radius 4 centered around the x-axis. And so that would be the equation y squared plus z squared is equal to 16, where again, this radius here is 4. So up here is 4 as well. All right. Um, but we want the region or the inequality y squared is plus z squared is equal or less than 16. So really, we all want all points inside this circular cylinder. Okay. If this was equal or greater than 16, it would be every point outside of the cylinder. Equal to means, of course, we just uh, we include this boundary, so the actual equation of that cylinder. y squared plus z squared is equal to 16. That circular cylinder. All right. We have one more here, uh, and that is given by this inequality. Well, this looks really close to the equation of a sphere. If we uh, look at x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 2z is equal to less than 3. And x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 2z is equal or greater than 0. So this looks like two equations of a sphere. So what we're going to do is we're going to complete the square in order to find our actual equation of the sphere in standard form. So to do that, 
we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 2z plus something. Well, what should we add here? Well, we divide this 2 by 2, and then we square that value. So we're going to add 1. If we add 1 here on the inside, then we need to add 1 in all other parts of the inequality. So we add 1 on the left. 0 plus 1 is 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. And so we have an inequality here. 1 is less than x squared plus y squared plus z minus 1 squared is equal or less than 4. So this is a sphere centered at 0, 0, 1 with radius 1. And then a sphere uh, centered at that same point, 0, 0, 1 with radius 2. So let's draw those real quick, or attempt to. I make no promises yet. So we have a z is equal to 1 here, z is equal to 2, and then we're going to probably gonna need 3 and 4. All right, so we have a sphere centered at 0, 0, 1 with radius 1. So I've drawn that here. And then we have a sphere centered at that same point of radius 2. So radius 2 would be something like this. And this line is in front, and this dotted line is in the back. And so we have two spheres, one inside the other. And this inequality says we want the region, so all points, um, in between those two spheres. So really, that's all points inside the sphere of radius 2, centered at 0, 0, 1, and outside the sphere of radius 1, centered at 0, 0, 1. So let's write that out. This is the points inside and including the boundary of the sphere centered at 0, 0, 1 with radius 2 and outside the sphere centered at 0, 0, 1 with radius 1. All right. And uh, that uh, ends our notes for this section.